I see it. Oh, hello, everyone. My name is Eva Marie Everson, and I am with my friend, best-selling author, Misu Andrews. Hello, everyone, and hello, Eva. It's so good to get to visit with you. It is, it is, and we've been talking before we hit the record button. We have so many things in common when it comes to writing, but there is one thing that we definitely have in common, and we've talked about this previously, and that is our love for Israel. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me about the first time you went to Israel and subsequent trips and things like that? You know, the first time I went was in 2000. And honestly, I, I, I wasn't even that excited about going. We went with our church. My husband was an associate pastor at the time. And the senior pastor and his wife got to go if we had enough people sign up to go. And then the associate pastor got to go, my husband. And then if we inched over a certain number, then the associate pastor's wife got to go. Uh -huh. So I think I was trying not to get my hopes up too much, but sure enough, I got to go for free that first time. Yes. And so I, I, I didn't think about it too much. And then as the, the date approached, so about two days before I started to get excited, and I'm telling you, when I stepped off that airplane, it mm. just hit me like a yes. ton of bricks. I am stepping onto the land that was yes. promised yes. to Abraham. Yes. And from that moment, it was, it, it just, the weight of it mm -hmm. was just incredible. And everywhere we went, I, and our guide, of course, everybody talks about their guide, but yes. I had the best guide. Oh. You know, I mean, everybody says that too, you know, right? I don't know about that. And, and our guide, he was amazing. He was a retired tank commander. Ooh. He it was a sixth generation Jerusalem Jew. He could quote the New Testament yes. to yes. us better than we could. I mean, yes. he he had more of it memorized than we did. Um, and and just the the amazing, amazing history as well as biblical history yes, yes. Um, was just fascinating to me. And then I thought, oh, well, we're going to come back a year later. I mean, we were going to get another trip going. We were going to come back every year. That didn't happen. So <laughs> it took us 20 years. Wow. And at the time, I in 2000, I wasn't writing yet. I have yes. no intention of writing books. I, I was speaking a lot. And then I ended up getting sick in 2002. I was in bed for six months and I'd never, I've really never regained my complete health since then. Yes. Um, and so instead of speaking a lot, I, I write yes. and I, I write edutainment. So to educate and to entertain, but, there you go. I, and so I love to train through writing and had it not been for that mm -hmm. trip, oh my goodness. Yeah. And so in 2020, we went back as a 20 year yeah. thing, but also to celebrate my 10th book. Yes. And so the 20th year trip was just amazing as well, because I got to take several readers with me and we got to celebrate the different sites yes. where some of my books were placed. Absolutely. Yeah. That was just amazing too so, so you obviously went before the pandemic hit and shut you it know what? down talk about timing uh, we went march 6th and the pandemic hit while we were there yes we were supposed to go to petra as a three-day extension yeah um by the time we got to jerusalem we, I think we're going to have four or five days in Jerusalem mm -hmm. and our last touring day in Jerusalem was canceled because mm -hmm. they shut the city shut down Everything down, yeah. and we couldn't have more than four people together in a group. Wow. And so we didn't get to see the city of David or Hezekiah's tunnels, which yeah. were the two things, yes, the biggest things really on my list do. that yes. I wanted to see. But that's okay because we're going to go back someday. I just yes, know right. we are, that's Lord. Right. I just know we are. So, um, and and, but it was so interesting. We would go through the. We were able to still go through the markets. The markets were still oh, open. Yeah. yeah. And it was so interesting because some of them were begging us to come in and shop oh, yes. in their stores. 
yes. because they knew they knew what was uh, coming. Yeah. Well, yeah. they thought, you know, we'll be we closed for a couple of weeks or even a month. Oh, they were devastated at thinking it might be a month, right? Yes, of course, of course. Yeah. And they depend they on tourism. They depend on the everyday. It's their life. It's Jerusalem, their life. Jerusalemite. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, and but then especially on others. tourism. Exactly. Then there were others that were covering and they'd say, COVID, COVID, when we'd walk by. So it was interesting, the two different. Yeah. Yeah. It, it very, and it, it was polarizing, just like it is here in our of country. Of course. Yeah. You know, different, different ways that they were. So we were supposed to do the Petra thing, but if we left Israel, we wouldn't be able to get back in for our flight. So we right. had to cancel Petra. Right. Ah, another one I really wanted to see. I know. Anyway. Yes. Ah, so we canceled Petra. We stayed in Israel and then we were supposed to go to Tel Aviv um, to catch the Petra stuff, mm -hmm. but we ended up in Tel Aviv for four days just on our own because our guide couldn't guide us or she would be fined. And yeah. so she left us, we stayed in Tel Aviv and we had four days to wander Tel Aviv by ourselves, Wow! which it was so fun. I bet. Yeah. And the old city of Joppa. Yeah. Yeah. right there with Tel Aviv right oh right. we had such a ball oh, and good. our our hotel was fabulous yeah. um they oh, normally, yeah, the hotels in Tel Aviv are exquisite oh yeah they, yeah yeah and they normally only served uh breakfast and lunches yes. but their dinners that they fixed we were the only ones in the hotel and by the time we left the the bus driver that took us to the airport he said, you do realize you're the last tour wow. group in Israel? And I said, no, I didn't know that. But I said, wow. I, that's, that's a distinction that I think I'll probably always remember. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So for sure. that was our, um, it, it was a very memorable trip. Very memorable. So well, tell me about yours. Tell well, about, I, I, my yeah. first trip was in 2002 and I went as a reporter. Uh, the oh, yes. uh, uh, IMOT, Israeli Ministry of Tourism, was offering reporters uh, that you would go with women or men, of course, and I was with the women. Um, <laughs> there were six of us, and then and along oh. with someone from uh, IMOT from the United States. So Donna Kempler was our uh, IMOT representative. She was from L.A., and the six of us flew over. We didn't all necessarily fly in at the same time, although many of us did, but not, not necessarily. And then our guide was Miriam feinberg Vamosh, who I ended up writing a book with and has remained my very, very dear friend. Um, but we were there. I at, bought her book when I was there in 2020. You did. You bought her book. That's right. Book. Yeah. She's a best-selling author there. And oh. she's just wonderful. And, and so, uh, um, yeah, she wrote, and I should say this, she wrote Daily Life in the Times of Jesus. That's the one that you bought. She also wrote many others, Women in the Bible. Foods, I think. Bible, is, food in the Bible. Yep, yep. You see her books at a lot of the tourist sites. They've been yep. translated into just dozens upon dozens of languages and, uh, you know, because of the, the tourists that come from all over the world. Yeah. But um, at any rate, uh, we were there at the expense of the, the country. But what we had to do was to go back and write articles for publications that had at least 50,000 in circulation. And, and I was writing for crosswalk.com. So that was my 2002 trip. And, um, and then I ended up going back in 2007 because Miriam and I were contracted by Thomas Nelson to write a book as a Jewish woman and as a Christian, you know, walking the land together and the sites and this oh. and, that, and that that book, I'm very proud to say, went on to win a silver medallion from ECPA oh. um, as, as oh. from other awards, but we were very, very proud of that. And, uh, and then I went back again in 2009. Miriam and I designed a tour for journalists that would begin in the desert and then go up into the oh. Galilee and then into Jerusalem so that you would have that spiritual experience of coming out of the desert as you know, even as Jesus went into the desert to be baptized and then went yes. to the desert uh, for his 40 days. And, and then as the Jews came out of the desert after 40 years of one. Oh, yeah. Uh, so we wanted that experience for, uh, you know, for anybody and everybody yeah. we wanted to prove that, that this was the way to do it was to go down oh. into, 
in Avdat and uh, into Nahalzi. And, and then to come up, you know, this is where Ben Gurion is buried and, and he oh, loved yeah. that part of the land so much. It's just, it's just fascinating. But so I, I, we took, I took five other uh, journalists along with another uh, IMOT representative from the United States, Joe Diaz. And Donna, unfortunately, I, I should say, unfortunately, had passed away. She had cancer, mm. young woman. Uh, mm. But uh, so, you know, Donna was not involved in this. But we went back in 09 and, uh, and just once again had this most uh, amazing experience there. There's oh. no way not to have an amazing experience yeah, there. That's really true. Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, you get the question do you have a favorite site? And that is so difficult oh. to answer. So I'm, but I'm going to do it anyway. You know, now I have to do it like in the Galilee, it's this, in the desert, it's that. Okay. <laughs> sure is what mm-hmm. it says. But so you tell me if you have a favorite site. Um. Oh, see, that is hard. Oh, 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 oh. Can I do it the way you said? Sure. Yeah. 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 Okay. Absolutely. So, so this last trip, this last trip, we did the spring of Engedi. We didn't do that on the first trip, but Uh, I have. Okay. My husband almost had to fire carry me out because I I mean, it was quite a climb, but yeah. Yeah. David's waterfall. Oh, oh, I now, I now, you know, I I always wondered how in the world could David hide 600 men in the desert? Now you know. How could he do that? (laughs) Now I know. Yeah. Yeah. He totally could hide 600 men and their families in that desert. It was, yeah, yeah. Incredible. It's just beautiful. So that was mm, that, and that may have been one of, that may have been my favorite of all. I love in the Galilee. I love Caesarea Philippi. Yes. That yes. area is just also, but see, again, it's the water. It's, it's that, the water. Yeah, it is. It's that water and that, uh, and the caves and the mountains and the, how that all just kind of pulls it together. Yes. Um, and I think in, in Jerusalem, my goodness, that's hard to say, but I, I you know, you just, the garden tomb, there's just a spirit about that, that it just, in our experience this year at the garden tomb, we met um, a family from, I believe it was the Congo. And she was actually the, the ambassador to Jerusalem. And they'd lived there for, I don't know, several years, but they were there at the garden tomb. And this is the day before Israel shut down down. and they had, they were spending the day in the garden tomb praying. And, um, they happened to be there when our group was doing our communion service and we invited them to, to join us. And it was so cool to, to celebrate that with our international brothers and sisters at the garden too. Right. Yes. During a pandemic, you know, during an event that was affecting the whole world. world. Yeah. Yeah. And we're in Israel with our family from Congo, you know, I mean, it just, I know it was, yeah. Yeah. He's got the whole world in his hands. Yes. Yes. That's what it was in that moment. It, It was, um, it was one of those sovereignty moments. I, yeah. I, you know, my favorite place in Jerusalem, and this is going to sound strange coming from a non-Catholic, but it's um, the um, <laughs> the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Is it? So I'm, okay. I'm not so sure on all, you know, everything that's in there. And I'm, but I'm going to tell you why. When I was there in 07 with Miriam, I made a comment about, you know, just, I, I, all the icons and the this and yeah. the that that's in there, yeah. and, and there's beautiful. almost this this staunch holiness. <laughs> it's like you're scared mm-hmm. too. And and she said because she she has her master's in archaeology and heritage, and she's been a tour guide for so many years. She happened to mention that there is a the chapel of Saint Vartan that is a hidden cave, and inside that cave there is a, an etching. Uh, that that dates way 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 back, like first century maybe AD, and it's the it's the etching of um, a boat with a broken mast, and in in Latin it says, "Lord, we have come," 
and it, they they think that it must have been Roman pilgrims that were coming to Jerusalem at some point, uh, you know, not too long after the the church began, and that mm. they must have had some kind of accident with the boat, and they drew the boat with a broken mast, and but they were like, we came anyway, you know. And she said, Uh it's so hidden. They keep it behind lock and key. And one priest per day has the key. And I said, oh, Miriam, I have to see that drawing. You just have to. And so she went up to one of the priests and asked in Hebrew, you know, who has the key to the chapel of St. Vartan? And he said, uh, you know, lo, 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 which was a word I learned very easily. (laughs) No, no, no. (laughs) No, no, He didn't know. He didn't know. And she said in Hebrew, and if there should happen to be a donation to the church. Oh, yeah, well. Well, then he knew. <laughs> well, then he knew. <laughs> and then he knew. And he left yep. us. He told us to stand still. He left us. He went and got the key. And he came back and he just walked past us. And he said, quickly, quickly. Yalla, yalla. Started following him around these corridors and down these stairs and into this cave. And then he left us. And we just, you know, I had just enough juice in my camera. I thought, please don't die on me now. And so, you know, we were like, you could barely see, but we got into this cave and there it was. I mean, we're like up against this wall and there it is right there. Oh my. And I said, Miriam, I don't know if I have enough juice to take the picture because my camera was dying, but I raised my camera. I focused it. It was, you know, nice uh, Canon I think it was either a D10 or a D30. And I took the picture and it took, <gasps> camera died. Oh! But it ended up in the book. The, the picture was there. Oh. The picture was there. Oh. I was like oh. just dying to get back to the car, to get oh. my battery, you know, a fresh battery we did. And it was like, it's there. So oh. I have that picture. And I just knowing that I'm one of the few people, not everybody awesome. gets to go in that cave because most people don't even know it's there. That's awesome. It was a really, really wonderful moment for me in Jerusalem, but it was Mm -hmm. something about being with Miriam and knowing Mm -hmm. how ancient this is and that it was a hidden thing and that we had, we had gotten to see it. Um, Mm -hmm. But uh, definitely in the Galilee, it's uh, Tel Hazor, which Joshua burned to the ground and there's still evidence Mm -hmm. of fire there. Um, That was when I had my big defining moment in 2002. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I'm with you on Engedi. There's just nothing like Engedi. Um, but I, you know, definitely had a big moment in, in uh, Nahal Zin and in, in Avdat, uh, which is way down, like I said, where Ben Gurion is, is buried. But mm. in Getty, I, you know, I climbed over these huge boulders to get to the lower waterfall, David. So mm. it's like, it, 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 it's, just, it's like thunder. Just, you know, the roar of these waterfalls, yeah. there's three of them. Oh, okay. And like you said, when you get to the top, when you get to the <laughs> tallest one, the biggest one. Yeah. So to Miriam, it sounds like soldiers marching. That, that yeah. thunderous, that brrr, mm-hmm. you know, it was just, mm-hmm. it was amazing. Such and a to great. see, to see that water, yeah. it, when you're surrounded by so much wilderness, Yes. I mean, it, it is hot. Yes. It's nowhere else was hot. We were there and we were there in early March. It was cold. I mean, yeah, yeah. you know, in other parts and then you get into this wilderness and it's, you know, it's 80 and it's hot and you're sweaty and it's gross. And yeah. like, then you get to this water in the it's cool <laughs> water in the desert, yeah. you know, water that means desert. something now yeah. when you yeah. read that in scripture and when you when you read the Psalms now, when I read the Psalms now, and I read when when David calls God his his water in the desert or his right. shield or his yes. fortress. Yes. Or that, that my rock. It's like you my rock. How big those rocks are. It's not a rock. No. Okay? He's not it's saying not a rock. Yeah. No. My rock. It's He's ginormous. Like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. and and it it meant so much because you know, David just, he used the things that he was looking at at the time. He just sat around with his harp mm-hmm. or his lyre yeah. or whatever. And he yeah. said, oh God, you know what? You're my desk. Yes. You know, it was whatever he's looking at at the time. Right. And yeah. he made, oh God, you're, you know yeah. what? You're my laptop. 
Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, I mean, exactly. It's just whatever was there. Was, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he, he just saw God and whatever was around him. And, and, and he just made God his. I, that was also that. the beauty yeah. of Engedi was just uh, how yeah. you just saw that David, he just loved on God wherever he was. And uh, yeah, that's, awesome. that, that, that speaks so much about his heart. Yeah. Well, how did, since you were not a writer when you went the first time, how did going affect you in your writing? Because you write biblical fiction. Yeah. Yeah. And only biblical fiction, yes. you know, and blog posts are nonfiction, but they're always about biblical stuff. Right. So, yeah. Um, and, and I think that, you know, I had no idea I would need all that information. Yeah. <laughs> and I think, oh, I would have paid a whole lot more attention on that first trip. <laughs> right. Um, I should have taken a video I, camera. <laughs> well, you know what? It's interesting because on that first trip, you know, I, we were so grateful that we got to go for free. I mean, we didn't have two pennies to rub together. We were so poor. Um, and so as our gift, I had been a medical scribe when Roy was in seminary. And so I had followed this precious doctor around that I just loved. Uh, he was Indian and he saw 60 to 80 patients a day. And I walked around behind him and I just wrote down everything he said. Right. And so when we, and that was back in 91 to 93, well, in 2000, when we went to Israel, I was really good at taking notes. Sure you were. And yeah. so yeah. I scribed everything yeah. our guide said at yeah. every uh, <laughs> location. And then I transcribed that into a book yeah. for everybody so that was on the trip. And so I, I published that little book for all that of the people. The so that, and and that was our gift to everybody that went on the trip as a thank you for, you know, the fact that we got to go ourselves. And I think doing that really cemented some of those locations and what the guide said, the details about each one. And I think doing that, um, I learned the details about some of that stuff. It went deep. You know, yes. when you actually write things down and then you actually type it out. And I mean, yeah. I got it three or four times. Yeah. And so I, I, I know, I knew a lot of detail about some of those places. Yes. Um, it made me search my Bible a yes. little more deeply. Um, and then you see and, it differently. And then you, yeah, yeah. And I, you know, even my, my brain at 57 is like Swiss cheese, you know, and when things fall into those dark holes, they never yeah. come back. They're yeah. gone. They're yeah. just really gone. And, but it's not so with scripture and not so with, um, the, the research that I do it's, and that's why I know it's the Lord, because I honestly cannot tell you what I ate for breakfast this morning, but I can tell you, uh, I, I, tell you what the hair care products in Assyria were like in the 1700 right. BC. So there you go. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I know that the it Lord sparks something. Yeah. It does, you know, it does. Uh, you know and, for, for me, cause I, I'm primarily a fiction writer when I went over and, and wrote mm -hmm. a book with Miriam, that's a nonfiction work, but sure. it required the, the hand of a fiction writer because, you know, we, mm -hmm. we use creative nonfiction in other words. Sure. Um, but for me, it's like after that trip to Israel, I saw colors brighter. I, I felt the senses in a deeper way. Yeah. So what I heard, I was more in tune to what I heard. I was more in mm -hmm. tune to what I saw. I was more in tune yeah. to what I smelled and what I felt, you know, both emotionally and to the touch. Um, mm -hmm. but just the, the whole thing. I just seemed like all of my senses came alive when I went yeah. there. And I, you really, it's difficult to explain. But it is though the just you know how we as writers we have words in our head all the time all the time <laughs> so mm -hmm. going, all the time it just it just seems like the words everywhere we went the the descriptive words were popping just like mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. couldn't just see something and say you know yes that is green you know it mm -hmm. was the most verdant shade of green I had ever yeah. seen you know, it was like yeah. everything was richer 
And Mm -hmm. I felt like that transposed itself onto my fiction as well. Yeah. That whatever it was I was writing, I I saw it more clearly. I felt it deeper. Mm. I heard it more loudly in my ears. You know, it's just Mm -hmm. like everything just kind of came to life after that trip. And and like you said, it's the moment your foot hits. It is you know, Ben Gurion airport, whatever it is, you know, it's just all of a sudden the air is different and it's Mm -hmm. difficult to explain, but it's as, it's as real as anything I've ever talked about in my whole life. So, and I, I I think something else too, is, you know, when we read scripture, we have in our, our minds something, you know, we, we imagine what we're, reading we have in mind you know the the sea of galilee we know it's a lake it's lake gennesaret or however we're supposed to say that right um and so we have in mind a lake that we've seen yes our own experience but until you see the sea of galilee you don't realize that ain't no lake i mean that it's a lake but i mean it's it's, not a pond (laughs) that's it's huge you know Yes. And, and so I think the scale of things, but by the same token, the, I remember the first time we went experiencing the size of Israel and realizing it wasn't any bigger than the state of Indiana, right. which is where we were from, but we experienced every kind of weather right. we had we had our winter coats on at Caesarea Philippi. We had bathing suits on three days later in the yes. desert. Yes. And then it was, we had to have our, our spring coats and rain, you know, and umbrellas yeah. because it was freezing raining in Jerusalem. And so thinking about how could, uh, and it was tropical in, in the Galilee. Yes. And so to think about a little bitty area yeah. and, And that's the land that God gave them. And it made a huge difference, which tribe got which parcel. Absolutely. Yeah. And so you don't really need that until you're there. Yeah. Yeah. And, and again, in En Gedi, when I was trying to climb those hills, like a mountain goat, um, (laughs) I had to rewrite one of the short stories I'd written for Patreon because for David's wife, Ahinoam, to watch David bringing Abigail after they, he decided to marry Abigail. Yes. It would take a whole lot longer for them to make it up those rocks yeah. than I had given in that dialogue in her head. Right. So I had to change that because yeah. I had them just zipping right up there. Well, no, no, no. They're not no, zipping no, no. up anywhere on those cliffs. So even silly little things like that in my writing. It, it makes a difference after yeah. you've been there. Especially yeah. if Abigail was wearing her high heel sandals, you know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, uh, you have to be very, very careful. Um, and because that is a lot of limestone. It, oh, yeah. And, I'm, it, and it's, it's very slippery. Slippery, you know, it's slippery yeah. Like it's wet, slippery, but it's just, you know, you can just slide very easily on it. So, yeah. Yeah. and that is another reason why I'm, I was so fascinated by the mountain goats, the hearts, you know, the, uh, the, the way they climb is, oh, I don't, I don't know why amazing. they just don't tumble and fall every one of them, Yeah, but yeah. they're fascinating, fascinating to watch. So what is the last thing that you had published and what's next for you? Um, the, the last thing just came out on guideposts books. Um, yes. and it is the reluctant rival and Leah's story. Oh, I've always loved Leah. I was I so know. excited to get to Poor write Leah. that. I know, but you know what? She is triumphant in this story because I do love Leah and I am so grateful that she is buried in the same tomb with Jacob and I was gonna say uh, right? Yes. I think that is such a redemptive ending for her. Yes. So this is a redemptive story for Leah and I am thrilled by it. So that that's with guidepost books. Um, you can find it in the Ordinary Women of the Bible series. So that's a, a fun thing. And I am working on Potiphar's Wife. Uh, that will come out in 20, what is this, 21, 22. That comes out next spring. 
with Waterbrook. So now, that's is this the Joseph story in the Joseph story? It is. Ooh, it is. So Potiphar's we see wife. Joseph a little bit in Leah's story and yeah. kind of get get to know him a little bit there. But yeah, this one is oh, this one is so much fun. Yeah, we oh, well, it's really fun. Of, I, yeah, of Leah, um, I I did get the opportunity in 07 to go into Rachel's tomb. A oh, Utah really? Experience. That was it. I Miriam and I got on a bus. We we were we were the only I think we were the only two non ultra orthodox people on the bus. And and I got to experience the men and the women going down to pray. And and she said that it's typically for you know fertility. Um, but, uh, but, you know, heavily guarded because we were right outside of Bethlehem, which is, is not is Palestinian. You know, friendly to, to Jews at this point. And, yeah. um, I've never, I've never experienced anything quite like that, but it, it was oh, wow. another one of those definitely changed me and made mm. me think about how these people take their lives really in just, well, they put their lives into somebody else's hands. Just oh, yeah. pray every day they do this several times a day wow. and it, wow. it was a wonderful experience so mm. yeah that, very cool yeah that 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 is something i will never ever forget well mm. so i have a book coming out tell, i was gonna say tell day. us about yeah. what you've yeah. got going so on I, well i'm gonna show off because i can no, please <laughs> this is it it's <gasps> dust yes and again, it's 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 not you know it's not biblical uh, but it's one of those books that I feel like because I had been to Israel, because of my experiences, um, I, and I just have to say, I just felt like the Holy Spirit just kicked all of my senses into overdrive while mm. I was there. And that has changed me forever as a writer. I've always said, and, and maybe you agree with me, that I've always felt like if it's possible that every seminary student before they graduate should go to is oh, an experience absolutely as a student absolutely. yeah because it would if, if every them. christian could go yeah i know honestly it it would change the way it would change it changes the way you see god it does it, it, yeah absolutely it does tell yeah. tell um everyone where they find you how do they find you find you can find me at my website, nisuandrews.com. It's N-E-S-U. I know, strange name, sorry. Uh, nisuandrews.com. You can also find me on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, you know, yeah. all those fun little places. All those fun little places. Well, yeah. I am so grateful that you took this time to chat with me. Oh. And uh, if anyone wants to know or cares, you can find me at Eva Marie Everson yes. author.com, not Eva Marie Everson.com. That's a name squatter. Oh. So yes, I have to get oh. my name trademarked to take care of that. And I just don't have to. Mm. <laughs> so, yeah. I know. Just like one more thing to deal with. So yeah. uh yes, it's Eva Marie Everson author.com. Uh Eva Marie Everson.com is somebody who buys furniture and juices, and that's not me. Uh so <laughs> I don't know. It's your heart. I don't know. No. I know. I I yeah. had I had Eva Marie Everson.com for a long time decided to add the, the word author and, and thought, well, nobody will ever touch Eva Marie Everson.com. I mean, why, I, I, I looked it up. I'm the only Eva Marie Everson in the world. And yet somebody did that. So what are you going to do? Yeah. Oh I mean, goodness. we confirmed it. I'm, I, I, this thing. is an imposter. So yeah. Oh my goodness. I don't That's know who he awful. or she is, but yeah, I oh. think I should be flattered. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, I'm never letting go of me too, Andrew. Don't ever I, let I it do go. know I'm the only one of those in the world. Of I mean, course. I'm really pretty sure about that. So yeah. 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 Oh but my. Yeah. Oh. Whatever, whatever. But again, oh. thank you so much. And I'm going to end the recording. And I just thank you again. And thank everybody for listening. And yeah, thank you. Have a thank wonderful you. God. God filled day.